let's continue Super Mario Odyssey, yeah? We're up to post-game stuff, so. I'm going to continue in the Mushroom Kingdom for a bit, and then we'll head out and go back to previous worlds and start collecting the rest of the moons. If you're watching this later on YouTube, thanks for clicking the video, by the way. Alright, there's areas I haven't been to. So this is definitely one of them. I'm not sure I'll go for the full 100%. Um, by that, I mean, like, the costumes. It's just because they're expensive and I don't know. I will try my best to amass a bunch of coins and get some, but we'll see. I, at the very least, want the pixel skin. Good. That's, that's a hell of a way to start already. I'm doing the wrong thing, aren't I? Yeah, this is already bad. Redo, do over. <laughs> I thought I had to chase it, I don't think that's the case. Good, good start. I like the part where I messed it up immediately. Oh wow, I didn't know you could do this. It's just another one of these, like, oh, you're gonna shake the controller. But if I do have to go, hang on, how high can I go up? Yeah, definitely not high enough to get in there. Okay, just, just making sure. Uh... What is this then, if not charging into him? Oh, what have I done? <laughs> that was dumb. Uh, I think to be missing the point. Because doesn't this thing run out of water eventually? Okay, you know what? I'm going to see how much time I have. This thing runs out of water eventually, so let's just see. I'm going to get a feel for how long I can hold this before it runs out of water. I have this have they altered this in a way where I don't run out of water? Because that's not fair if they have. Oh no, they've definitely altered it. There's no way that this is. Well that's not cool. Like, how was I supposed to know that? Yeah, it's altered. Okay, fine. Infinite. You can hear it refilling. Surprised. <laughs> it's 
so weird, but fine. It's just one of these things that I guess I would have figured out eventually. Oh, you can hit him that way. That's cool. <laughs> it doesn't have to be vertical. It can be like this. Yeah, got you in the eye. That is probably one of the most violent explosions in the game. I can't remember if I got all the currency. I think I'm missing... Oh, no. Yeah. I'm missing a few. Uh, hold on. I don't think I went in here yet. Yep. Another boss. Here go. <laughs> Oh. I mean, I'm doing this to get extra coin. Oops. It's okay, like I will heal. One of these will have a heal, one of these will have a heal. There we go. Spooky. Watch out for the snipe. I think it'd be funny if just a roasted bird just appeared in the soup. It'd be perfect. Make like this nice chicken soup. Or bird soup. Just the cartoonish one, you know? There's still probably a couple more rematches to do.
Oh yeah, I definitely haven't done this. And there's still the whole matter of the, uh, the cube things as well. Uh oh. Uh oh. Okay, it's fine. <laughs> Wee. Okay, the shape is definitely a thing. I just need to find the shape herder, which I haven't done yet. Who looks like the herding shape? Ignore that for now. Get through these rematches. <laughs> I might make that the thumbnail if I'm being lazy. Oh, there's two of them. Come here. Oh, that's rude. Ooh, they are making this very hard. Wow, this is super chaotic. Uh-oh, not good. Yeah, this is not going well. That's <laughs> a bad start. Oh my god. Alright, this is fine. I need to prioritize shooting down what it shoots first. Oh, what? No! The beam said I was safe! Damn it! <laughs> Alright, well. I guess it still seeks onto me. See, this is what Dark Souls would do to you, or like a Souls-like game, is just to challenge the player. Hey, have two of the bosses you fought before. If you had problems with one, good luck with two. Not that I have any problems with this one, though. I'm shooting too early. Okay. I think I need to be more... Accurate with my shots. Okay, it's fine. Could have gone worse. Oh, 
Oh, this is stressful. Hey, Nick, how's my week? It was all right. Just gonna uh, work, being work. Checking out a game with AI last night it was fun. Before it splits, before it splits, before it splits. Oh crap, it's back to this again. Yeah, it was fun. This is post game stuff, so. It's like fighting the bosses again, but it's harder versions of the bosses. Oh my god. Uh-oh. Not good, not good, not good. No heals either. Oh wait, yes, heals. Oh, no. Uh-oh. Move, 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 move. Go for the heal, go for the heal. Yeah, this, this game's good because it has a bunch of post-game stuff that you can do. A bunch of challenge moons. Okay, where is it? Got it. Okay. Ugh. <laughs> has a lot of outfits as well that you can unlock. I don't know if I'll unlock all of them because it can be quite expensive. I got the only one that matters for now. Okay. Is that all of them? I think there might be one more. I can't remember if I caught this rabbit. The trick is something like this. You have to snipe it like this. Oh, wow. Okay. <laughs> well. Play it ahead in time, right? Similar to this. Yeah, yeah. I played ahead in time. Ahead in time gets inspired by this and Banjo Kazooie. Well, the Mario 64 formula. I played that on the Switch, unfortunately, though. Just games from that era. That had to be one. That was like the game that kind of awoke me to the fact that, hmm, the Switch kind of shouldn't be something I buy games for. Unless they're exclusives. That was not a good port. Had in time released the same day, just a few days before. Oh. Yeah, I don't remember. It was like seven years ago. I just remember, so it like had assets that were like very low quality JPEG 
And then the load times were just insane on it, and it just didn't run well. Like, even for a Switch game. I had fun with the game, it just definitely was not happy with the purchase on the Switch. Okay. This is the last one, I think. Hey, sushi. Could have gotten that kind of game without doing, knowing. Yeah, I mean, at the at the time, I was in that period where you know I wanted to get more and more games for the Switch because I was playing them in handheld mode quite a bit, and. It just made sense, right? It's like, oh yeah, get them on my Switch, and then if I want to play them in bed or something, I can. But... Yeah, I don't know. That game worked me up to it. It was like, huh, yeah, I guess... You never regard... Un unless you're going to be playing the game in handheld mode, there are certain games where it's like, well... I'm going to be playing them portably, so that's fine. Just the Switch versions of games were just downgrades in almost every regard. There are exceptions, but, you know, in general. Like Diablo 2, for example, I don't care if that game doesn't look good visually. I, I love playing that on my Switch. And the fact that it's cross-play, it's good. Or cross progression, as I say, not cross play. That's why I went for a Steam Deck. Yeah, I mean, I would like a Steam Deck, but they're just not available in Australia. And I guess I'm less about handheld play now. The only handheld gameplay I'm doing lately is on the Analog Pocket, just playing old, older titles, which has been fun. I don't think I'd get much use of a Steam Deck as I think I would nowadays. So generally play things at my desk, like I'm either streaming it or I'm playing a PC version. And now that I have the new computer where just everything is just pristine with this graphics card. <laughs> uh, I guess less in incentive to want a Steam Deck. Oh, don't die, please. I'm almost there. I'm just... I'm doing okay. <laughs> Trying to get through the boss... The extra boss stages. Oh, no. Oh, that... That was lucky. That was lucky. No! Oh, damn it. I got sniped. <laughs> I, th I thought I had s just avoided it. Ugh, damn it. Almost. Does a Steam Deck like you do the uh, the streaming? Op well, I guess it's still capped at like whatever you the display resolution is. But I would assume it allows you to do remote play. And um, your computer like renders the graphics. It still would be whatever um, resolution is allowed on it, ultimately. But yeah, for me to get one, I'd have to take a trip somewhere and buy it. That's one of the things you didn't really try because you don't think you would use that. Not even to have, like, say, a game that's insanely graphically intense and just to, um, put off the rendering. I mean, I guess if there would be latency for sure, but there are certain games I'd imagine that wouldn't matter too much.
But also, it sh surely it would impact battery because it would only just have to receive a video signal and it wouldn't be rendering, so it'd probably put less of a strain on the battery. I guess that's the only reason I'd look into it, and because at the end of the day, I'm mostly going to be playing it at home since I don't travel to an office anymore. Oops. Same scenario again. <laughs> ah. I haven't had a problem with the battery so far. It's not that I guess it would be a problem, like, you'd probably get some more time out of it. Like, okay, if Elden Ring is lasting six hours, I would imagine it would last a couple hours more if you're just streaming it over Wi-Fi instead of rendering it. I don't know. I would imagine that'd be the case. Let's see, for a game like Elden Ring, I would imagine that's where Wi-Fi streaming might not be convenient. Just something that requires reaction. Why am I having so many problems with this one? I thought this one was going to be the one that would be the easiest fight. Celeste, yeah. And I think that's the thing with cloud gaming is like, as much as they want that to be a thing, because they want the whole... The whole thing where people don't own video games anymore and you just rent them. Or at least just... It's just a license to have them. That's where cloud gaming falls apart, is like anything that requires precision and for there to be like basically negligible amounts of latency, it, it just doesn't work. It's not good enough, and it might not ever be. License to game. Well, yeah. I mean, one of the Ubisoft, like, higher-ups said that. Oh, okay. uh, players need to get used to not owning... Um, games anymore. Like, gamers. Not players. That's what I was trying to say. Good. That's why physical copies are important. Ugh, oh, finally. The new PlayStation handheld is bullshit. They're promoting like it's something amazing, but it's literally remote play control off the screen. Oh yeah, no, that thing is 100% a scam. In my opinion. Um, it's on a multitude of levels. One, it's such an expensive device for what it is, but also... It doesn't do Bluetooth audio, and f to do the audio, you have to buy Sony's proprietary headset. And to add insult to injury, like, you, when you buy those new headsets, you can't even use them on the PS5 without a special dongle. It's just, the whole thing is, I don't know why anyone would buy that thing. For the price you pay for it, you could just go get an Android phone with probably a bigger screen. And then get yourself a backbone controller, or just hook up uh, a dual sense to it. I don't know. I don't get. I don't get that thing. Don't get me wrong. It looks nice, but just functionally, it's it's dumb. Why would anyone want to invest in your product if they won't even get to keep your product? Well, here's the thing. Like we say that as people that have experienced a time where we get to own things, but at a certain point, there'll be people born into this world where that'll be the norm and they just won't know any better and they won't complain about it because that's just the norm. 
It's kind of like the whole thing with microtransactions in video games and pay to win. Like, I have younger relatives that can't even imagine a game without that stuff. But to a lot of us, it's like, man, remember when games didn't do that? Remember when you bought a game, you bought the game, and they didn't try to sell you things constantly? There was none of this live service crap. And that's just the thing. It's eventually the crowd that is the voice of reason when it comes to ownership. We're slowly going to vanish. They have a lot to overcome to get to that point, because the thing is, to get to a point where digital stuff is the norm, right? Where you're only purchasing digitally. First of all, internet access needs to get to the point where, like, the majority of the population has not only access to it, but affordable access to it and good speeds. And we're just nowhere near that point. Like, you'd be surprised, even in larger countries like the US, how much of a percentage of the population doesn't have access to decent internet that is capable of downloading large files that quickly. It's just, it's not there yet. So that's like one thing they have to overcome. And then there's just, it's an uphill, it's an uphill battle either way. Who has sheep? Someone wants sheep. But then there's also the thing where people want physical games and there's still a crowd for that. Block- oh, wants the actual old one. Apparently there are speculations they plan to make GTA 6 an hour paid game. Play a dollar an hour? Oh, that is horrifying. I mean, here's the thing. Everyone wants to do a game or a product where they're charging monthly for it. So then they're perpetually making money off a sale, a single sale. And when every company tries to do that, it's a case of, well, there's only so much people earn, you know? Oh my God. What did I miss there? There's only so much money people earn, and it's just a thing where if every company's doing that, it's just a simple case of people will either resort to piracy or just not buy certain products. Because they just won't be able to pay the monthly fee for it. It's such a dumb thing, like eventually it'll hit that point where there's just too many things trying to charge you monthly. Right now it's fine because, you know, it's a mix of things that you pay monthly and then things that you don't. That's like a one-off cost. Dude, they're even doing that to cars. Like, I saw, um, some of the new Kia cars, they have this service where you pay, like, 150 a year just to be able to access certain features that the car has. Like, remote unlocking. It's just, they're trying to do it to everything, and it'd be fine if people, what people earned, went up with that, but it, it's not the case. Like, people aren't making more money. And yet, we want to pay for more things on a monthly basis. It's just, it's not sustainable. It's not going to happen. Yeah, I mean, piracy, at the end of the day, it's best been said. I don't know who said it, but it's a, res it's a result of things just not being made available or things being unaffordable at the end of the day. It's got nothing to do with people wanting to steal stuff. It's just people that truly want to get something and want to support something and they can't get it. The reason they resort to piracy is just because it's just not priced well or like they don't make it available. Like they do that stupid region locking thing, which, you know, as an Australian, oh man, <laughs> we all know how to use VPNs here.
And I'm sure you Europeans as well would also be well versed in that stuff. Because Europe also gets excluded. Piracy is a product of its own creation. Art should be accessible. And if you don't really make it accessible, the people who really want it will figure it out. And that's pretty much it. There's a whole argument, well, well, you don't have to consume it. If you can't afford it, don't consume it. But the problem is, like, the mindset that is being put into people from very early on is consume, consume, consume. So it's like, you can't have your cake and eat it. If you're forcing people to be in this mindset where they need to consume, then they're going to want to consume at whatever cost. It's like, you've created that monster. I like this. This is taking me to a happy place. Difficult Mario one. Okay, this is the part that's screwing me up, because it's like, oh, alright, well... I hated stages that did this, because it just messes with my mind, but I'll try my best. Nope. There's a developer on YouTube, and he said he made his game in Brazil 75% off, and his sale went up insanely, and piracy went down super fast, yeah. That makes sense. And there's so many examples of just companies taking advantage of the fact that they're leaders in a particular area. You know, I despise Adobe as a company, always have. Because as someone that, or, I mean, I want to say since I was a kid, but, at, you know, at the very least a young teenager, I've always wanted to do design stuff, be involved in the creative aspect, and also coding. And Adobe just, man, back in the day, I'm sorry, but, like, if you learnt Adobe products, you pirated them. That's just the reality of it. This is beyond the statute of limitations, like, this was a long time ago. <laughs> but, it's just, no student could realistically afford their crap. And even now, when it's a subscription service, I'm sorry, like... N most people are struggling as students, you they're not going to pay you a monthly fee that's insane, just so they can learn your stuff. When they're professionals, that's a different story. When they have a job in their industry, sure. But not when they're students, like, it's- it's insane. So, Adobe's boxed software back in the day before they did subscription services in Australia, right? On- there were graphic design studios that would fly an employee to Los Angeles to buy the software because it was cheaper to fly someone over to LA than to buy the software in Australia. That's how horrible they were. And for student pricing, it was like, oh yeah, we have a student version, don't worry, you don't have to pay full price. Oh cool, how much does the student student version of your software cost? Oh, if you want everything, it'll be a thousand dollars, please. You know, you students should have a thousand dollars. Yeah, absolutely despise that company. Still to this day, like, I try to avoid using this stuff where possible. But the sad reality is they're just so ingrained in graphic design and creative. It's just, it's very hard to avoid using their things. And that's, that's the tragedy is like, you kind of have to learn their stuff. Oh, the stage. It's just the moment- it, the moment it inverts, that's where my brain goes to mush. 
Oh, I can't even use the D-pad to control it. Ugh. Alright, well, whatever. Okay. I'm gonna focus on this for a minute. the hole. <laughs> Damn it. Uh, hey, Mr. Sam. Wait, some professors won't let you buy a used copy of their book? What? Nah, see, that's just annoying. I can't say I've ever experienced that here. All the books that I got for university and high school, they were all used. Never brought any of those books brand new. And I knew someone that had photocopied books and it was fine. Like, what's the difference? Granted, I suppose I never had a teacher where part of the reading material was a book they authored. That might be the difference. It's just, I guess, their ego. You had a $160 chemistry book? Jeez, why? <laughs> Man. I'll... I think my favorite purchase the school tried to push on us was, like, the school diary. They were like, oh, the school diary is required. You must purchase the school's diary so your your child can be organized never purchased I, I think my parents purchased that once when just the, for the first year and then the next year they were like did you even use that and i said no and they just didn't buy it ever since then yeah high school the high school had a diary they probably just it was a generic diary and it just had a cover with their logo on it. That's all it was. It wasn't fancy or anything. But like, they tried to make it like a hard requirement. That school tried to do a bunch of dodgy things. They had this thing where you'd go collect your books. Right? And you had the option of buying used, which was nice. But, uh... I remember they always tried to tack on this thing that they called a voluntary contribution fee. It was automatically on your bill and then every year my dad would be like, it's not voluntary. If you're putting it on, it's not voluntary. If it's truly voluntary, cool, take it off. I volunteer not to pay it. Oh, you mean uni? Oh, dude, uni textbooks, I I think I got one of them. The others, I just straight up photocopied pages. Because it was like, well, crap! <laughs> oh, I hate this. This is tilting me. Here's the thing, I was doing graphic design and multimedia and programming, and I'm like, why the hell do I need a, th a theory book? It's like, if I want to look anything up, I'll just use the internet. Like, what do you mean? What do I need a textbook for? Oh, because I'm going to learn professional writing? Okay, cool. Point me to the, p the pages I need to read. I'll go to the library and um, just borrow the book, and then I'll have the necessary materials. Like, why do I have to spend over... Almost $200 for a book that I'm just seldom going to use. 
Yeah, I have a very, um... What's the word? Hang on. <laughs> I was trying to talk while focusing on this. I have a very cynical view of university. Here's the thing. I know it's... For certain fields, it's definitely something that is a, requ a requirement, and it helps you prepare for certain fields. I recognize this. You know, I'm not gonna list all of them, but law and medicine are like the two that come off the top of my head. There's probably others. But for a lot of things, it's just like, in my opinion, it's just a piece of paper that proves you're organized. And I don't know if it's the case elsewhere, but in Australia, it's become a thing where they're just trying to milk you for as much money as they can just to get that piece of paper. I mean, some of the stuff my younger brothers have had to go through to get their degrees compared to what I did, it's like, oh no, dude, 100%, they're just doing it for money. Oh my god. They, most degrees are like trimesters now, so you have to take up more top subjects, which means you're paying more. And my experience with university was... From what I did, that degree taught me two things that I didn't know already in terms of, like, technical skills for my job, right? But the rest of it, it was just like, well, this is just stuff that's proving that I'm organized. And the subjects that are supposedly technical subjects, they're just barely scraping the surface and they're not really... I learned more on the job, let's put it that way. Or I already had the skills because I learned off the internet, and it's just... At the end of the day, it was just because when applying for work, having that line in your resume that says you have your degree, that's pretty much the reason. But otherwise, it's like it really didn't contribute much to my skill set or... Like... I guess effect how I approach work, like, I don't know. Maybe that's just my own experience, but just after that, I, I just felt pretty jaded towards just higher education. I know it's useful. It's not everything, but just there's certain things where it, it just becomes that. It's just proving you're organized. And so you can put it on your resume that, hey, I have a degree. And they know this. Oh my god, this is so annoying. <laughs> Ugh! Ugh, the stage! <laughs> IMO degree is a piece of paper that shows future employers that you're capable of surviving extreme burnout. But that's the thing, it does, it's not even extreme burnout. Like, I'd argue some jobs have a higher level of extreme burnout than anything they ever taught at university, and... The way they prepare you for work is so flawed. All right, this is how they do it here. So there's certain subjects that have a percentage of your grade come from group work. And that's fine, but the way it works is like, and I'm sure a lot of people had this experience, particularly in Australia, is like, there's sometimes a student that doesn't pull their weight, all right? And it's, it brings the whole group down. And instead of punishing the individual that's not doing their job, the whole group goes down and you get a really bad grade. And that doesn't make sense because that's not how things work in real life is like, what do you mean? If I'm working with people on a project in a group, in a job scenario, if someone's not pulling their weight, that person gets fired. The entire team doesn't get punished unless it's like, you know, a catastrophic thing where everyone on the team is bad, but like, Generally speaking, you'll point out, hey, this person's not doing their job. You point that out when you're in university, they're like, oh, well, they don't do anything. They don't deal with the scenario of, like, the student who's not pulling their weight. They just let it go, and then you get a bad grade. This part is single-handedly screwing me. It, this thing goes around so quickly. Ha <laughs> ha. 
It's because you have to press the input. And I can't use the D-pad, I have to use the analog stick, it's just... What am I even trying to go for? I'm going for coins. I'm thinking there's like another moon there. Maybe there's no moon there. Anyway. I don't want to devalue someone who's proud of their degree. As I said, there's, there's definitely scenarios where that should be the case, but... I guess for what I did, which is like a creative field, ultimately it's... For me, it's a piece of paper that proved I was organized, and that's pretty much it. The, the degree is at my parents' house. I don't even have it. Like, they're more proud of it than I am. You'd be proud of it if it was free. Well, it used to be the case until a certain generation of people um, said, fuck you, I got mine, and didn't really have the heart to let us get it for free anymore. I'm not going to say their names, but the letter starts with a B and ends with a Uma. That's specifically an Australian thing. University used to be free for the boomers. It's not anymore. You'd be proud if you didn't feel like it was forced. Yeah, I feel ya. Problem is, the youth of today is lazy. Oh man. No, I think we've like we've just been believed to make. We've been made to believe that we're lazy, but anyway. Ah! <laughs> God, lazy. Oh, it's because this is Mar this is in the style of Mario One, so this is like tilting me extra hard. Because you don't understand, Mario One is my thing. Like, it's my thing. I can't quantify how many hours I played that game as a kid. But the thing that's killing me is having to use an al analog stick right now for precise platforming. Back in your day, like, you just walked into a random business and they gave you a job for life. Kids said this day aren't willing to do that. See, I my first job, I walked into a fast food place and they gave me a job, like, right away on the spot. And I didn't have to do anything extra, just the, on the spot they gave me my uniform and said, turn up Monday for your first shift, and that was it. My brothers, like my younger ones that are 10 years younger than me, when they started looking for their first job, they tried the same thing, and no one would hire them. It was, it was insane, like, and it's not like they're incompetent or whatever. They tried, there's like all these processes now. Like, going to group interviews for a fast food place, like, how insane is that? Just the amount of hoops they had to jump into, jump through, just to get a job in fast food, like, what? Oh, this analog stick! I'm losing my mind. Okay. Is there, a, there there's nothing there, right? I'm just Well, there's that other island across from it that has coins. Like I'm thinking there's something there, but is it just is it really just coins? 
Okay, well, I just saw something there. It might just... Okay, I'm complicating this. I'm bringing this upon myself. I'm sorry. This, this happens when I'm talking about something that's, like, thought-provoking. I can make conversation when I'm gaming. I can. It's just when the conversation is something that is thought-provoking or just a topic that isn't, you know, just gaming banter, that's when it's just I get distracted. <laughs> it's my fault, don't worry. And the conversation is great. I, I do like having the conversation. But I think at least for the next minute, or at least when I get past this, I'm just going to abstain from, from that conversation. <laughs> Hang on, I'll read in a sec. Yeah, I don't know, man. It's... Dude, it, it keeps crouching. It's so clunky. It is not funny. Like, if you see me crouch, it's just because the analog stick is saying, Oh no, you're crouching, you're not running anymore. That's what's getting me killed the majority of the time. Christ. Good! <laughs> you went and filled out an application in front of the manager every day till they hired you speech from oh you got that speech from your dad right and you're like cool no one has paper applications anymore even mcdonald's has all this shit online yeah i mean i never i never got that sort of speech from my parents thankfully it took you ages to get your first job how old were you when you got your first job mr sam i the moment i could i went for it, it was like what 14 and nine months I don't know if that's the case anymore. Oh, that was horrible. Yeah, it's, it's tough, man. Like... It's not just the group interview thing. Now... You're not even dealing with a human anymore. Now they do AI interviews. You were 20. Had you... I guess... Had you worked before then? I guess that was your first job, huh? Sometimes that's why, because... I had a cousin that did the same thing, and... It's just... From what I've heard, if you don't have a job as a teenager, a lot of places frown upon that. My cousin had the same problem, just couldn't find work. Took him a while. It won't count because it was in your uncle's restaurant. Oh. Yeah, that makes sense. You have to go do actual work at your job now. <laughs> no problem. Well, try to have fun, brightness on. Okay, uh, what am I doing next? There's still three coins somewhere. Where haven't I been? I should probably check the list, huh? Eeeh, okay, there's still, a, there's still a lot. For your job, you had to do a Slovak language test, a constitution test, a physical exam, an interview, and a psychological test. Holy crap. Another country I've heard where there's just intense job application processes is Japan. It's like they have to sit exams as well.
the dude during the psychological test says you're too young to work there. You're 18, which was by law enough. Applied three years later and got accepted. Did your bachelor in between? Ugh, I hate any form of just. I experienced ageism so many times, man. But I, I was 19 with my degree, and the first few years of finding work in my industry was just so damn rough, man. It was a mix of, we don't want to pay you much because you're young, or we don't want to give you a chance because you're young. They would never look at the merit of my skills. It wasn't until I was about, like, 21, 22 that then that changed a bit. And then there was those jobs that were like, oh, we're looking for an entry-level junior. Must have five years of experience. Like, what the hell do you mean entry-level junior? And then you want five years of experience. Oh, you mean you want to pay someone who's experienced the price of a junior? Oh, that's totally different. One of these has to be up a tree, I'm convinced. I might use the telescope feature. Periscope, whatever it is. As I said, you had zero years working experience turning 18 because you never had the need to have a side job before that. You're usually helping your parents, grandparents, and got money from them. Yeah. But I mean, it's not that bad, it's like... Yeah, I guess different circumstances. Okay, if you spot out coins, let me know. I've been in every tower. What's that? That? That's, um, that's my ship. <laughs> What's the Odyssey? Hmm, I didn't say anything. Your surname is super finished and long, so you assume that's why they didn't call you for an interview? Really? <laughs> For a surname? I don't know. I mean, I knew people with ridiculously long surnames. Oh, there's the other nut. Cool. I mean, wouldn't they just try to go for your your first name if they can't pronounce it? Alright, they're there. Cool. We're done with that. I'll do what I can. Where's, uh, the bird? I need to go to the bird. The bird will give me clues as to where things are. I still haven't seen... A shepherd, I guess? Someone that wants their sheep? Okay. 
Okay. What am I missing? Oops. I'll go see if I can find the bird. The bird's probably inside the castle. Pretty sure I completed the Yoshi thing anyway. Let's go. Bird, are you in here? Hmm. Well, I probably have new stuff. I can't say I had a teacher who had a name that was difficult to pronounce. We definitely had one that had a very long name, but we just shortened it to, like, Mrs. J. Reminds me of when I when I when I graduated. That was I don't know what name it was, but it was someone that had not only did they have an insanely long surname, but it was one of those surnames that split in two. You know? Like mother father surname. So it was a long surname and it was split in two. And the person announcing the names to go on stage and collect your uh, degree pronounced it perfectly without stumbling and she got a round of applause from the crowd <laughs> because it was just that much of an effort to say the name and just didn't stumble it was kind of impressive what was the name i don't remember it was long like she was saying the name for a good five seconds Like, there's no way in hell I would remember it. <laughs> it's just that complicated. It was five seconds. Yeah. First name, first name, middle name, last name, part one that was long, last name, part two, which was medium in length. Insane. And it was something where you needed to know how the name was pronounced to pronounce it correctly, because it had, like, accent. You needed to have the correct accent to pronounce it. And she just did it without stumbling. And she was Australian, so wasn't someone that spoke the language natively, I don't think. Just got it correct. Round of applause. What language was the name? I'm gonna guess it was some Eastern European name. It had to have been. Just the way it was pronounced. But I have no way of knowing. I, I just don't know. Oh, there's the bird. Okay. I can't tell you. Light from the ceiling. Oh, so it does have one there. Courtyard chest trap. Okay. Least in your own two part. Surname like hyphenated, yeah. 
I don't know what to tell you. Or at least the first part was like Eastern European. I don't know about the second part of the surname. trying to vandalize this. This was a long time ago, so you know. It's just a memory that came back, just talking about how to pronounce names. Life Mario is weird. What do you mean? Perfectly normal. Superior outfit, in my opinion. <laughs> you thought about changing names, but it seems like a hassle. Uh, as someone that had to do it for stupid reasons, yes, it is. It's definitely, definitely a hassle. <laughs> Thanks for the prime sub, Kira. Yeah. Thin warrior. I just put on the warrior outfit because I wanted to. Also, I save up for the pixel Mario outfit. So it says the beam of light. I, mean, I would assume here. Why does it have to be so long? Why can't you have a nice short one? I mean, maybe in Finland it is a nice and short one. Ah, <laughs> uh, shit. Oh, here. Yeah, so, hang on. It's got something to do with this. You also find the lack of pictures to jump into disturbing. Yeah, I mean, it's nice that the castle's here, but there's definitely things that I wish were here, you know? Hang on, what is this? There's, some, there's something definitely here. This says the light beam, and I would be shocked if they didn't do something here. But what is it? The only thing I can think of is like... Oh, I didn't try... Did I try jumping into the stained glass? I guess I didn't. be this. So... <laughs> trying to smash through it. I don't remember. Do I remember the name of the Chabalan principle? I do, but I'm not going to say it. These are stories where I'm just gonna talk about them generally and not say anything about the people. Just know that the person existed. She's probably retired, to be honest. I'd be surprised if she was still teaching. Maybe Yoshi could break it. Uh, maybe Yoshi could actually go in the castle. I don't 
Von daher. Yeah, surely she'd be retired, because I imagine she would have been in her early 30s. She would certainly be retired by now. Yeah, I don't think it's that. I don't think it's breaking the glass, like vandalizing the castle glass. Okay, you can't take Yoshi in, so then what the hell is this? I mean, you can see it, right? Like... Maybe it's just I just need to look at it at a specific spot. Hang on, stand in dead center. Or is it you don't see anything? Okay, here's the thing. In Super Mario 64, this is here, and you look up at the ceiling, and then you get transported to a special stage. So that's the knowledge I'm basing it off. And the name of the moon is... Hold on. Where is it? So the, first of all, you need that piece of knowledge, but it says light from the ceiling, right? So my interpretation of that is, okay, it's the Mario 64 thing. They're making a reference to it. So what is it? This is the light from the ceiling. We just need to figure out what we need to do here. It's not really a ceiling though. This is true. Either way, I think it is in reference to this. I mean, what, what else would it be? Unless I have to open a hole somewhere. Okay, hang on. Maybe I need to open a hole in the ceiling. I'm going back up. That's got to be a reference to that. It has to be. Where else is there a ceiling? Have a look. So this tower would be the thing that's facing it directly, right? First person mode. Might be onto something. That's snapshot mode, though. I don't think there's a first person mode. Oh, no, there. Oh, you might be right. You might be right, that might be it. That's a good call, because that's what you had to do in 64. You had to enter first-person camera mode. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, at least let me get these contributes to the tally. I don't think we can climb any higher. Yeah, now that he says it. But if that's the case, then ceiling is a terrible word to use for that. You're right, it's a wall. Okay, stand on the spot and then... Let's just make sure we're dead center. I 
Ah, oh, it's the exact same. Damn it. <laughs> Damn it! I should have just replicated what you did in 64. Okay, good work. I was right, I was just doing it wrong. Just the minor detail of, yeah, third-person camera. You're right. Or first-person camera. Yeah, I should have known. Okay, that's fine. Do you have a new moon for me while I'm here? I think you do. Oh, I've achieved nothing new. Okay, that's fine. Okay. Bird is here. There's plenty to do. Hang on, I should. Hey. I should go buy the remaining items. Oh. Yeah, right, I forgot about this. There's a door I can access now. A lot of collectibles. That does look pretty cool. It does make me happy to see this. Even though I did not own the game, it has just a memory that I'll, will always just be with me. It's just the first time I saw Mario 64. Man, I was blown away by that. Just the first time I saw that game. What is this? I love that they got rid of the the L is real. Kind of insane how, despite the rumors, there was tr truth to the whole thing about Luigi being in the game originally. So, hang on, what's the deal here? There were numbers. What were the numbers for? My understanding was it weren't. I'm going to exit and come back in. What does that mean? Probably get a reward for killing them in that order. That seems very cruel. Oh, no, no. It's this. It's this. Okay. 
It's not killing him in that order. It's opening the chest in the order. It's not enemies. It's the treasure chest. I gotta open them in that order. Okay, so pay attention. This is one. I think this was two. This was three. No? Oh, three. Okay, my bad. I'll get that. I don't mind getting the extra coins, to be honest. Crap. Okay, okay. I got it, I got it now. Nearly. This is the one. I may as well get this again just to get the coins. Every little bit matters. Okay, I need to go see Bird Friend. Isn't the bird here? Or am I imagining it? Hey, Nikto, how's it going? Oh, wait until I unlock the secret cutscene. <laughs> yeah, that's not gonna happen. I don't feel compelled. Am I doing near? Uh, probably. They've tried to budget the time. No, you haven't missed it. It's just another one of those, like... If this was a game that released in the 90s and you said that, I'd believe you and go for it. Where the heck is the butt? Am I blind? Okay, hang on. You know what? I'm asking. Yeah, cool. See, there's this thing called a map, right? And the map tells you where things are when you're completely blind. Rumble. Oh, there's like another rematch one I haven't done. Okay. Yeah, I don't know who's herding the sheep, though. That's what I've been looking for. Who is the sheep herder? Okay, well, I've been in that. There's got to be one more door I haven't gone through. Somewhere. Yeah. 
I remember there being a purpose for those flowers as well. Oh, you're the herder. Yep, okay. Got it. I love that the sheep have sombreros. That's cultural appropriation. What if the sheep are from Central America or South America? Crap. It's okay, it's part of my heritage. I give them a, those sheep, those particular sheep, I give them a pass. You're making a joke, I know. I guess if I'm reading that out loud, it's more difficult to convey that it's meant to just. That's why my response is like, well, they could be imported. Sheep. You added the face. How am I supposed to read that, though? That's cultural appropriation, random blue-haired girl from the internet. I it's okay, I authorize the pass for them to wear the sombrero. I don't know, man. There's like a diff. There's like a difference between celebrating it and appropriating. It makes me happy when I see them in game. <laughs> uh oh. Hey, get off the ship. Like, I love the Toast Arena Kingdom. It's so good. Uh-oh. Hold on. No, okay, no, that's, prob that's probably for the best. Stop! Stop, 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 stop. Careful with this one. Yeah, let's just talk about Mario and just not the state of things when it comes to certain things. Let's talk about how I'm just punting this ship sheep across the map. <laughs> uh, sheep. They modeled after Sean the Sheep. Sean the Sheep? 
What does that ring a bell? I don't know. Man, their faces. <laughs> I think their faces are perfect. It's like goat. It's like a goat simulator face, I guess. No, it's just more the topic is like, well... Just never know. It's just one of those things that... For a stream, just talking about that stuff's not a good idea. And you just... Particularly with me, I just want to chill and talk about the stupid things I'm doing in-game. Or how much fun I'm having in a game. And sometimes, just even jesting in that direction can often derail things. So, that's why I'd prefer not to talk too much about it. Well, how much fun I'm not having, that's another thing. Although, to be fair, even when I say I'm not having fun, I'm generally having fun. I don't know, man. People aren't here to listen to that shit. <laughs> They're here to play games or listen to me playing games. Oh, right. I forgot about this one. Oh, there's another one. But I got the feeling one of them is on the castle roof. I bet you one of them's on the castle roof. What happens if they fall in the water? I think they evaporate. Much like Yoshi. They just respawn. Okay, oh, oh. that worried me. I thought for a sec. I just appreciate that the noises this Yoshi make are, are good noises. They chose not to include that. That that dumb noise he's made since Nintendo 64 days. Thankfully, that noise is not here. I'll oh, see that's how you get higher. Oh, you know what? I think you can climb up this now that I... No, but then you have to give up Yoshi. Never mind. Vantage point. I see all. Where is this final sheep? Yeah, there's like... There was a scarecrow that activates like a hidden tower. Trying to spot it out, but I don't see it. That means it's probably over there by the beach. You would think. 
It has to be somewhere where I couldn't see it from that vantage point. Oh. Yeah, this is a thing. Now I remember. Okay. The flower thing. That's why they're there. It's for the foot race. I gotta do that too. Even though it fell down the well, it would just respawn. It's going to be in a sneaky spot, there's no doubt about it. I'll climb this just in case it's up here. There's also still one more boss rush, which I don't know which tower I haven't done. There's like a tower I haven't done. Well, not boss rush, like an extra boss. I mean, may as well. Does this have a door? No, but I've done it. Oh, here it is. What? It was somewhat simple. All right. Other way, other way, other way. <laughs> there we go. Well, the, the logic is you can't control the sheep because they're wearing the hats. The hats are blocking you. Anti mind control sombreros. I went in that pipe. Alright, let's just do this now. Roving races. We rove the globe. Okay, here we go. Race us to the goal. This is classic. Wait, is it just that tower there? I see the door. It was closed. Oh, I butchered this. Oh, never mind. <laughs> I mean, it's the regular cup, but it's, it's okay. It's okay. Be is this be the beginner mode? It's the beginner mode. I know this gets way more punishing. All right, hold on. 
just want to confirm something here. Yeah, no, the door's open, so... I don't know which one I haven't done. I know the pipe leads to the... the octopus, so... Okay, anyway. I'm in. Okay, so this should be the hard one. Yep. Oh, I know which one it is. It's the Yoshi pipe that I cleared yesterday. I didn't go in it. Alright, cool. I'll take that. Good stuff. No. <laughs> what? No reward? Get out of here. What does this look like? I'm playing the game for fun. Oh, I gotta drain it again. Wait, does that mean I gotta remove the apple? Hope not. Yeah, there we go. Rematch! This is a cool fight. Wait, oh, is it? Oh, it's slippery now. Oh yeah, no, add ice. That's one way to make it hard. Good. <laughs> My old nemesis, ice. is under control. Uh-oh. I should have been closer. I don't think I'm gonna get this one. Don't think I'm gonna get this one. Get off him. Oh, crap. This is the Elden Ring of Mario? I think you mean this is the Mario of Elden Ring. Mario came first! <laughs>
Oh. So there we go. We're okay. Almost. Almost messed it up. Oh. Ice physics. I need to be relatively close to this. Okay, go. There we go. Good stuff. I mean, admittedly, the Nintendo 64 style is, like, a little bit strange with all that lighting. I played Sunshine 2, right? Yes, I've played it twice. First time with the GameCube, second time in the 3D collection. The first time was a disaster, and... <laughs> oh, did it infuriate me, but the second time was alright. It still made me salty. That's just the way Flood controls, I don't know. But also there were parts of the game that just felt unfinished. And there was platforming jank to boot. The amount of times Mario just slid off random surfaces. There's a community mod coming out this year. I'm sure there is. I mean... When you say mod, is it, like, aimed at people that want suffering, or is it just, hey, this is an experience that's enjoyable, and there, there might be a couple of difficult stages here and there, but overall, it's fun. Or is it just designed for masochists? If it's designed for masochists, it's hard pass. I've already been there. It just looks like a normal way. Okay, I'll keep an eye on it. I would need... I'd want to use, like... Well, is it something that's playable on the actual GameCube? Loose tile track down. Loose tile track down. Captain Toad is somewhere on this stage. I haven't found Captain Toad. Oh, actually, they were mentioning the captain. I have no clue, don't know how they do modding and those things. Sometimes they can um, run on the original hardware. So, like, when I played Janked Up Mario Party, for example, that was able to run on a Super Nintendo. So it depends if this thing is something that is only capable of running in Dolphin, or if, like, you were to load it as an ISO onto the GameCube would be able to run. Because it'd be cool to use the original controller on it. Like That's probably the reason I'd want to play it. The captain went to the shop. Oh. Apparently, Captain Toad is somewhere nearby. Hmm. Well, it's just the people running the store. Hang on. Dependency isn't required to use as a spawn dolphin emulator. Any device with an app capable of applying 
patches. Legally ripped USA non. Oh. Yeah, okay. I won't probably won't be able to play it on like my GameCube because it's a PAL version. I mean, you technically can run NTSC if you use um action replay. Like, there's a way to do it, but I don't know. I'm going back to this. You're on the roof of the building, aren't you? This is why this is here. Yep. There we go. Hooray! Okay, what's that done? Alright, what else? Jammin' in the Mushroom Kingdom. Music. Okay. Who would be doing music here? Some of these is like, where have I seen it before? I'll have a quick look around, but... It might be time to press on. Yeah, who would be doing music? Hmm. Still collecting coins. <laughs> okay, what's that? There's a guard on Yeah, we got that. Yoshi's favorite food is back there. That's fine. Already did that. Okay, this dude has music. Hold on. Hello. I'm traveling, search for different kinds of music. This theme is flat and blocky classic. Oh, here we go. Yes, this is it. This is the music I want to hear. Thank you. Here, Yeah, here we go. Okay, cool. We can play music now, so that's cool. Loose tile track down. Loose tile track down. Flat and blocky classic C418 Sweden. <laughs> oh man, that music is from a different era, but it's good. Ah, ba 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 ba. Loose tile. Yeah, I don't know about this one. There's got to be something I haven't done yet. I mean, otherwise, how are we doing? And go. Oh, dude, you have to like 100% this. Look at this. 
It has a capture list as well. Yeah, I'm not doing that. <laughs> I mean, maybe I'll unintentionally do it. I'm not going to make it my focus. We're pretty close to being done here. Alright, well, let's just put a pin in it for now. I don't want Near Automata to get shafted <laughs> like it always does. <laughs> Become a bit of a joke. Um, Alright. I collected pretty much all the moons here. There's still a little bit to go, but I'll continue next time. Anyway, if you're checking this out on YouTube, thanks for sticking around to the end as always. And if you want to support the channel over there, easiest way to do so is just click buttons like the like button, or you can also click to watch me play other things. Either way, it does help out a lot, so appreciate those who do that. But we'll continue this next time. <laughs>